Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of IMI. My name is Joshua Ansley, just your average 80s popped collar bully. You can call me Chet. And I'm coming to you from uh, St. John where I'm teaching yoga retreat this week. As you can see, I'm having a few issues with my accommodations, but I'll uh, talk to management, get that straightened out, and don't you guys worry about me. I'll be okay, I'm okay. Everything's gonna work out fine, don't worry. What are we gonna talk about this week, Josh? Well, this week we're gonna talk about renunciation. It seems like an apropos topic of conversation for this view, right? So, renunciation, that sounds really heavy. That sounds like, who wants to renounce anything? Like, nobody wants to renounce shit. Like, except maybe, except maybe the devil. I'll renounce the devil. Sometimes I wish I was born a southern gentleman so I could renounce the devil with a little bit of flair. But I wasn't. I was just born a white boy in Jersey. <laughs> Pop collar. Renunciation. This is some really, really, really powerful shit. Um, and it's really misunderstood, right? So most people think of renunciation and it's like giving up things and giving up things. And it's actually the exact opposite, okay? So we think of renunciation as giving up things and it's all these things that we want, our desires. And our desires are born of uh, uh, our association with this world, with this mind and this body, right? And so really renunciation is not about giving up everything. It's actually about picking up something else. When I was a child, I played with childish things. When I became an adult, I put those childish things away, right? And when we put those childish things away when we become an adult, it just happens naturally because we no longer are drawn to them. We just pick up higher things in life. And now as we get into being adults and we get into this life, right? and we're running and we're working, we're operating and we think we've got it in our teens, in our 20s, in our 30s, in our 40s, however old we are, you know, and something else happens. It's like there's always a new twist that is coming into our lives, right? And once we start recognizing that life is going to change, everything in it is ephemeral, it's changing. Our bodies, our thoughts, our emotions, our relationships, our careers, anything that is of this physical world, and that not just the tangible things, that includes our thoughts and emotions, all of that is ever-changing, right? And by a Vedantic definition, anything that is changing is unreal. And when we start to associate with the world and our, and our relationship to it, that's, renunciation is about relationship. As I always say, it's about uh, the suffering is not caused by the world, but how we relate to it. Everything is how we're relating to this world and relating to ourselves, right? So in an, in an instance of renunciation, it's not actually about letting other things go. Let's take veganism, for example, right? So people are like, oh my God, I can never live without. It's always living without, without, without. Instead of focusing on what we're moving towards, they say most revolutions don't work because it's focused on freedom from instead of freedom into. So we have to have a direction of where we're heading and otherwise we just keep looking back and we're walking into the future looking backwards, right? Instead of turning around and walking into the future. So it's about renunciation is actually, this is where it's going to get a little bit deep here because you know sometimes I like to be practical and sometimes I like to be out my motherfucking mind. And we get into a principle of karma yoga, right? So karma yoga is actually a type of yoga. It's not a physical asana practice, although it is a very physical practice. Karma itself means action, right? So it's about taking action in this world. And it's generally talked about service, right? So we're of service, we're of service to others, and it's an attitude of service. It's renunciation in action. It's not renunciation of action. Basically, it's renouncing the outcome of our actions. It is taking action, but being detached and releasing our attachment to the outcome of our actions because we are not responsible for the outcome of our actions. We are only responsible for the actions. Now, there's a lot we can figure out. Okay, there's these certain things that I see other people doing, and if I want that result, then I'm gonna take that result. I'm gonna take that action that they took, and hopefully I'll get that result. But it's still letting ourselves take this action in renunciation of the actual outcome that might happen because there's so many other factors that we are unaware of. And as we develop a relationship with the outcome of the action, or what gives us the outcome of the action, that would be God or Ishwara or whatever it is, the universe, right? And or the laws of nature, or the laws of physics, everything coming together to hopefully give us the desired outcome that we want. 
but we release ourselves from that desired outcome. And what happens is it starts to transform our work into service, into, into uh, worship, right? And that every action that we take is now devoted to something larger. And the real thing comes when we relinquish the doership of our action. And this is where it gets really deep in some intense uh, spiritual understanding and some knowledge that then has to be taken into practice. So you hear about karma and you say, like, oh, good karma, bad karma, this and that and that, right? And that karma is attached not to the physical body, because the physical body dies. And what happens is it's called the sukshma sharera. It's the, it's the uh, ethereal body, right? The karma is attached to that ethereal body. So the way to actually get enlightenment, and by the way, I'm talking about fucking enlightenment here. Not that I'm enlightened, but I'm talking about the process of enlightenment as I understand it. So we're not just talking about simple things, but this is a, a process towards it. It's the renunciation of your identity. It's the renunciation of the ownership of that mind-body complex, that sukshma sharera, right? Because the karma is attached to that. So when we relinquish ownership of that, that complex, and we realize that we are not my mind, I am not my mind, I am not my body, right? I am not my thoughts, I am not my emotions, and we relate to the world as the self, the deeper aspect of self, that absolute perfection, that love, that divine nature that is present in everything, right? So when we detach ourselves from this physical world and we really get connected with yoga, which is to yoke, and so we attach ourselves, connect to that deeper sense of self that is present in everything, that's how we then renounce the karma, and that would actually bring us to enlightenment. It's renouncing the, the doership, or being, renouncing the agent of doership, right? So that's one really deep concept of enlightenment is that we step out of the ownership of this karma which is attached to that ethereal body, right? So that the thoughts and the minds and emotions and all that stuff is not really who we are. That is just a small physical portion of who we are, right? So, as we bring that into a little more practical aspect in life, right? Which the, this knowledge, these are things that as we start to instill, it's not I was like, oh, that's really interesting. That's a really interesting concept, you know? I never thought about it like that. And that's just kind of cool for curiosity. But if you start actually practicing this and these concepts in your life, that's when you start to see the benefits of it. That's when you start to see the results, even though we just remain detached from the outcomes of our actions, right? So this renunciation in action is actually how we find success in life, right? Because we actually release ourselves from the attachment of the outcome. So let's take it in success or failure, right? You're real successful, you do good work, I say I'm proud of you. I'm real proud of you, right? But that means that if you do bad work, then I'm not proud of you, right? So if we are still attaching to our mind and our emotions and that need for validation or anything like that within our emotional bodies and stuff, and if we are not detached, then we will only be looking for our successes. And if we define ourselves by our successes, then we have to define ourselves by our failures, right? So when we detach ourselves from our successes, that doesn't mean that we don't have success. It doesn't mean we don't enjoy our success. It just means that we are not defined by our success. And that is renunciation. So we can partake in the world, but when we keep that second, we keep that secondary. And then what happens is a lot of times, you're not going to want to partake in the things, you know, I don't, I choose not to drink, you know, I have no desire to drink. It's a depressant. Why would I want to be, you know, if I'm unhappy, I'm going to have a drink. You know, somebody breaks up with you, you got to drink or if do something good to celebrate, you got to drink. So if you're depressed, you drink. If you're happy, you'd make yourself drink. Why? It doesn't make any sense to me. Right. And as I, it's not about fighting to not drink. It's actually just something, why would I want to do that? It doesn't, it doesn't make any logical sense to me. Right. And so as I get more and more whole within myself, I don't want to drink. So there's certain things that I wouldn't want to do, but there's other things that I might still want to do, you know? I still, no matter if you have issues with food, like I have tons of issues with food, I still want to eat. So it's not about not partaking in what's happening in the world. It's just that there's a pleasure trap. There's a good book called The Pleasure Trap and it talks about, you know, why, why, why do all those great foods, everything that tastes so good, why does that have to be bad for you? Like, I, don't, I didn't design it that way, but it's pretty, pretty logical actually. So as hunter-gatherers, we developed and evolved or were created, whatever the fuck, I don't know, 
with this idea of like, we don't know when the next meal is gonna come. So with something that's the highest caloric content, it's designed to taste good, so we're gonna eat that. Okay, we're gonna like that, right? Procreation, oh, it feels really good, so we do that. If it didn't feel good, nobody would ever fucking have sex and we wouldn't propagate this, the species, right? So it was actually for an essence of survival. But now, we do it for whatever reasons we want. We do it for other emotional validation. We do it for, you know, just this sensation that it gets on the tongue. It's really just, it's all it is is a message sent back from the brain, from the tongue back to the brain, and you know, we destroy our lives and our bodies because of it, because we're attached to that, right? So, but we're still gonna wanna do those things. We're still gonna wanna make love to people. We're still gonna wanna be able to share this. It's not about being a recluse or something like that. But when your relationship to it is changed, when it's an attitude of renunciation, when you're not defining yourself and your life based upon those things, then you can partake in those things, some of them, and some of them you might not want to, like veganism. Like I no longer care to eat meat because it is not something that I feel that I want to do. Not because I struggle so hard and because I'm like, I don't eat meat and I'm silently suffering in the background. You know, it's like, and some of these things, you know, if, if there's addiction or something in our lives, then we may have to actually renounce those lower things. And the trick is to pick up the top line behavior, basically. So there's something else that replaces it. It's kind of like that, the Indiana Jones trick, you know, as you leave the sandbag and take the, the Shiva sculpture or whatever it was, you know. Um, but we have, to, we have to replace them. If we're just renouncing the other stuff, we'll go absolutely out of our minds. That's how the, the chaos, you have, you have people that, are, that claim to be, you know, uh, renunciate and, you know, and it's all bullshit. You know, you know I mean, I'm not judging them. It's just like, I, 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 that sucks. That sucks if you're just locking yourself in the room and really still wanting all these things, but you're just saying no, 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 and showing other people maybe I'm not doing that, but you're fucking miserable. So it's to pick up the other things. That is renunciation. So we actually, we don't let go of anything. We actually pick up everything. You know, I remember hearing sometimes somebody talk about like, well, if I don't, if I don't do, uh, if I don't do drinks, or if I don't drink or do drugs, what am I gonna do? And the other person was like, everything else. So really on a very practical basis, it's about picking up the higher things in our lives and exploring, you know, like you find so much about what you really enjoy, who you really are in this world, you know? And then on a real spiritual, if you're talking about actual, you know, ascension or enlightenment, it's about completely renouncing this idea of that, that Joshua Ansley is who I am. This little speck of dust on this planet spinning around in the middle of an infinite space. Like what, what am I, I'm, I'm nothing. I'm nothing and I am everything. As I renounce that lower self, I become everything in that nothingness. What the fuck is he talking about? I have no idea. Peace, bitches. <laughs>